interesting that when God comforts you, it's easy to comfort other people. Now, when you, when you got it going on, it's, it's, it's much easier to encourage someone else to say, hey, keep your head up. But it's hard to tell someone to keep their head up when your head is down. But here, Apostle Paul, in the prison cell, his head is up. The psalmist declare, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. And the real test of where your, your spirituality is, is when conditions are not pleasant. That's how we can really tell where you are in Christ. When someone has got on your last nerve, then we can really see just how saved you really are. It's something about the pressures of life that, that really reveals what's on the inside of us. Here, Apostle Paul is in a Roman cell, and he is encouraging the church at Philippi to be conformable. He writes that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. I'm not, I'm not screaming and yelling to get out of jail. I'm not asking to break out walls. I just want to get to know Jesus. I want to get to know him. Here's a man who has preached and taught and, and he's recognized and seen God do great, great things in his life. But he's not, he's not satisfied. The biggest danger of the church among church folk is to get comfortable. It's a dangerous thing when church folk get comfortable. They get comfortable. I've been in church all my life. And the danger is for me to get comfortable. I got to watch out for that. Uh, it's possible even to be in penitentiary and get comfortable. You can be in the hospital and you can get comfortable. I mean, you can get really relaxed and settled. Uh, it becomes hospitable and relaxing uh, and peaceful and content and satisfied even in penitentiary. I know of some young men who don't want to come out of jail because it's comfortable. Bills are paid. Food is taken care of. Insurance is taken care of. Got my buddies I hang out with in the yard. I know my buddies on this floor. I, I'm, I'm comfortable. It's called, it's called being institutionalized. You can be in prison and you can get institutionalized and become more comfortable being incarcerated than being out on the street. The danger is when you become institutionalized in the church. Oh God, you got to help me here. When we look at this word institutionalized, it's a person, especially a long-term patient or prisoner, made apathetic or dependent after a long period in an institution. And we have to be so careful because we can become, we can become comfortable with our worship and comfortable with our praise and comfortable with our walk, our walk with God. Yes. Here Apostle Paul is challenging them not to become comfortable with just being in the church. Yes. But, but I want you to understand that that the goal is that you are to know Christ, to know Christ, to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Amen. That's what I want you to do. And being made conformable unto death. To be comfortable means, it means not causing any physical or unpleasant feelings. To be comfortable is not having any physically or unpleasant feelings. Uh, feelings or experiencing your experiencing physical comfort uh, to be comfortable means allowing it means to allowing yourself to be relaxed and causing no worries no difficulties no uncertainty you are you are comfortable you're comfortable and I come to challenge you today that God is calling us out of our comfort zone Amen. to a place where we can be made conformable unto his death we look at this word in this text, this word conformable. The word conformable means to take on the same form, to take on the same like shape. 
What Paul means by this phrase is that he desires to be a, a perfect son of God, a sinless son of God, uh, one who no longer needs to be ashamed of for anything that he has done. He wants to be Christ-like. I want you to conform me. I want you to shape me. I want you to remold me. I want, I want to be like you. In a prison cell, in incarcerated in prison, I'm not comfortable where I am. What I really want to know, I want to be more and more and more like Jesus. Amen. That's the goal. Yes, yes. I, I believe in prosperity. I believe in God opening up doors. But the, the, the objective is that I become more and more like him. Amen. And God is able to change me. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Amen. God, he challenges us to come out of our comfort zone and to be conformed in his likeness. I want to be like Jesus in every aspect. I will never totally arrive, but it's a journey to be more and more and more like him. I want to conform to him even to the extent that I have to die. I want to be more and more like Jesus. Here's a brother locked up in prison who said, I just want to be like Jesus. When your trials and tribulations come your way and you start saying, I want to be more and more like Jesus, you are really growing spiritually. Well, you know how you can focus more on him and on your, your, your trials and tribulations. So then what does it mean to be made conformable? unto his death. I'm going to go into three different dimensions on what it means to be conformable. He is in prison cells. I don't want to be comfortable in my ministry. I don't want to be comfortable as a pastor. I don't want to be comfortable in the church. I want to be conformed. Yeah. I want to look more and more and more like him. Yeah. It's not about you trying to find a comfortable church. I'm looking for a church where I can be comfortable. No, no, no. You need to find a church where you can be conformed in his likeness. Yeah. It's not about people liking you and you fitting in and you hobnobbing. No, 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 no. It's much more deeper than that, my brother. It's like you being like, how can you be more and more and more like Jesus? And you're going from church to church to church trying to find where you fit in. That's the wrong question you're asking. The real question is how can I be more and more and more like Christ? It's not the church that makes you. It's Christ who makes you. It's Christ who forms you. It's Christ who shapes you. Yes. I want to be made conformable. I want to look like him. Yes. Let's go through three aspects of being conformable. The, the first aspect of, I'm going to give you three dimensions of conformity. The first way I want to be conformed like him is in my thought life. I, I want my thought life to conform to the life of Christ. I want to think like Christ. I'm not running from devils. I'm not running from demons. I'm not hiding out. I'm not giving up because now I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want to change my thought life. I want my thought life to conform to the image of his word. If you want to change, the first thing in your life that must change must be your thought life. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he in this prison cell in this Roman jail I want my mind to conform to the likeness of Christ Paul writes to the church at Corinth 2 Corinthians 10 concerning his thought life he says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God check this out and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. He says, I am bringing into captivity every thought that does not line up with God's word. It's got to go. I cannot stop a thought from coming to my mind, but I can tell you how long it's going to stay. Woo. I'm going to tell you how long it's going to stay. If the thought says I'm a failure, I say, no, I'm more than a conqueror. I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. When your mind begins to conform to what God has said, you begin to talk back what God has said in his word. So the first level of, of, of your conforming is on the dimension of your thought life. 
You might be in a prison. You might be in a penitentiary. You might be locked up. You may be in this bad situation financially, but your thought life must conform to the promises of God. You are royal priesthood, the scripture says. You, you are chosen generation. You're, you're not the tail, but you're the head. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against a part of your thought life? Look, a thought is simply an image or a picture that moves. And when you have these moving thoughts in your head that doesn't line up with God's word, it has to go. The psalmist says, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the un ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Check this out. In his law doth he meditate. He meditates day and night. What does he meditate on? No, the goodness and the power of God. I'm thinking how great he is. I'm not a failure. I'm not a quitter. I'm not about to give up. Give up. I'm not about to defeat him. No, no, no. I am made into the image of Christ. My mind is conformed to his word. So the first part of this, 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 this transformation process is your mind being conformed. That's why you got to watch out who you hang out with. You got to hang out with the right people. I always argue two things in life will change you. Good people and good books. Books that inspire, books that inform, books that instruct. People who inform and inspire and instruct because those people, they're depositing words and concepts and dreams and vision and destiny in you. You hook up with the right people. I can tell your destiny in the next five years just by who you hang out with. I can tell where you're going to be in two years. You're going to be in the same place because you're hanging out with duds. But, 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 but if you hang out with the right people, those people have influence on your thought life. The Bible says it's evil communications corrupt good manners. So you, it's who you communicate with makes a tremendous difference in where you're going. So he says here, being conformable even unto death. The second aspect of this being conformable is in your, is in your language. It is with, it's with your words. Your, your, your thought life lays the foundation for what you're going to say. Here this brother's in the prison cell and God help my thought life. I'm here in a dark, cold prison cell. Help my thought life. See, let this in mind. The scripture says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus who being the form of God, thought it not robbery to become equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being, made, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. It was setting his life up for his words. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it's in you, it's going to come out. Come on, somebody. If it's in you, it's going to come out. Where did that curse word come from? Well, it was already in you. It was already in you. It was already in you. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's in you. My thought life conforms. And now my words take shape. What God would have me to say. We speak about Jesus we speak about Jesus, but do we speak like him? We speak about Jesus, but do we speak like him? Do you talk like him? You talk of him, but do you talk like him? If you talk like him, it means you're thinking right. When you start thinking right, you start talking right. Then I'm blessed. You may have, might have a dollar in your pocket, but I'm blessed. And I'm highly favored. Just lost your job. But hey, but God's going to bless me. There's a better job down the road. Yes. When, when we begin to really become conformed into the image of Christ, we can tell by your language. It's your conversation that gives you away. So here in the prison cell, this brother says that I thought that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. He's talking big talk because that's the way he thinks. If you don't think big, you can't talk big, brother. 
when you begin to think big about God and great about him and how powerful he is what follows is the language that follows with your thought life that's why people who don't really know God can't praise him properly because their thoughts about God are so small and minuscule that they can't really lift him up but the psalmist says I'm going to bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make a boast in thee O Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the Lord with me magnify him because in my mind he is so big bigger than my light bill bigger than racism bigger than troubles on my job bigger than troubles in my household he is so big and I'm going to lift him up from the rising of the sun into the going down of the same the name of the Lord it shall be praised how is it that you know so much about him but you can't open up your mouth and give him some glory and I'll say it again it's the law of impression expression whatever impresses you you're going to express I saw Lady D 37 years, about 37 years ago 36 years ago I was impressed so I had to express myself. What's your name? I'm from the United. I'm from St. Louis. She wasn't so impressed. When you are impressed, you express. Let me go deeper. I impression means something unique. You've got to find something unique to be impressed. You can't just see a standard car and be impressed. It's finding those unique qualities that brings about an impression. Woo! That's great. If I go down to one of the malls and, pair, and find a pair of shoes for, and buy a pair of shoes for $50, it costs $5,000. I got some shoes. This was $5,000. I got it for $50. I'm going to tell somebody. Woo! Five, feel like five, feel like five, five, feel like floating. Feel, these feel like five, five. I, I, I feel like it's five. I'm gonna talk to somebody. I got some five thousand dollar shoes on. I got it for fifty. I ain't crazy. I got it for fifty. I'm gonna tell somebody because I am impressed with the last pair on the rack. It fits perfect. I plan on I'm, yes. I'm shouting on Sunday. I'll find some place to shout. I am impressed. So we struggle praising him with our words because we're not so impressed. Ooh, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. No wonder we can't be quiet around here because we're so impressed about how he brought us out. Impressed on crack cocaine, he brought me out. Impressed, I should have been in a mental hospital, but he brought me out. Impressed, I should have had a nervous breakdown in my last divorce. Impressed that he helped me, I got to open up my mouth. Conformable. Meaning that my, my words will line up with my thought life. I'm not talking negativity. I'm not talking defeat. I'm not talking failure. No, 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 no. My, my lips will line up with God's word. Uh, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm going to speak about what God has said. I can't let the negative people words get into my spirit. Get away from me. I got to go. I just have to declare how great he is. Ooh, we can be so comfortable with our vocabulary. So comfortable saying the same things and thinking the same thoughts. If you're going to go to the next level, something must happen to your thought life and your words. I'm thinking big and I'm talking big. And the last point today, being made conformable in my actions. The way, the way I behave. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, if any will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he will find it. I, my life must conform to the image of Christ. That's what he's talking about. Be made conformable unto death. 
Question. Would you follow Jesus if it meant losing your closest friend? Would you follow Jesus if it meant alienation from your family? Because they used to booze and they smoke and dope and you got to say, hey, I'm saved now. But would you follow Jesus if it meant alienation from your family? Would you follow Jesus if it meant the loss of your reputation? You know, you got a rep. You player. You, know, you player. You know, you know how to get the numbers. Would you follow Jesus if, Jesus if it meant losing your job? Would you follow Jesus if it meant losing your life? That's what Apostle Paul is talking about. Being made conformable until it affects my lifestyle. The way I behave. The way I act. The way I perform, I'm reflecting the image of Christ. I can't have a wife and a girlfriend on the side. No, no, I can't do that. No, no, no. I'm not conforming to his image. I can't pretend to be one way, but y'all saw me on mall uh, another way. My wife and I, we took a cruise some years ago, and we were way somewhere out on the east, uh, west keys someplace, and we were on a, on, a, on a ship, and we bumped into some people we met in St. Louis. And I was holding our hand coming through one of, the, one of the floors. They said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I was on a ship with my wife. I was with her. How terrible to be caught with Susie. Uh, this Susie. This is my cousin. She's my cousin. She got two months to live. That's why I'm holding her hand. This Susie. When you really hungry for God, some stuff got to go. Susie, you got to go. I'm trying to be like Jesus. Lying, you got to go. Dishonesty, you got to go because I'm hungry after Jesus. When you really get hungry for him, you start letting stuff go. I got to let it go. You got to die, Leroy. I can't sleep with you no more. I'm trying to be saved. That's why right, I said Leroy. The objective is to be like Jesus. And every devil, every demon will challenge you. He will challenge you not to be like Christ. But hear the brother from a prison cell, from a Roman cell, and to be made conformable unto death. I want to look like him if it has to kill me. I want to walk like him, think like him, talk like him. I want to be like Jesus. There's nothing more important for me than to be like Christ. That's what I'm talking about today. Or are you so comfortable? Well, Pastor, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I don't want to make any changes. I'm, I'm, I'm all right, Pastor. I'm good. My daddy good. My grandma, everybody good. God doesn't want just good. He wants your best. I want you to go higher up. I want to challenge your faith. I want to stretch your faith. We attempt to do this, and I'm almost done. This month, we had a consecration. The, the objective was to draw closer to him. Nobody was forced to do it. But those that were hungry for God, here's an opportunity. Hook up and we're going we're gonna to really get hungry with seeking God. What are we going to do, Pastor? We're going to pray every day. We're going to fast on Wednesday. We're going to cut out our TV. We're going to cut out our, 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 our things that are not healthy for our spirit. And we're going to thirst and chase after him and read the word every day. And there were some folk, dude, I'm comfortable. I'm all right. Give me my coat. Give me my cheese. Give me my, I'm comfortable, Pastor. That's okay, because we're trying to find the people who want to be conformed. I want to break some habits. I want to go, I'm tired of the same old thought life. I'm tired of the same old language. I'm tired of the same, uh, the same kind of behavior. I want to draw closer to him. I'm tired. I want to go higher. I want a promotion in my spirit. And you weren't ready for this year. We'll catch you next year. But there were some people who said, I'm going to try this to the best of my ability. For what? I want to be like Christ. I, and when the, in order to be like Christ, you got to let some stuff go. I want to be like him. All your anger, all your disappointment, let it go. I'm trying to be like Christ. Is letting stuff go. And telling your flesh, I'm in control up in here. 
I'm calling the shots. You ain't, you having no donuts this month. No donuts for you this month. No red meat for you. No fried food. Not this month. No, 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 no. No fried food this month. I'm in total control because I'm trying to conform myself. That's what I'm talking about. Your life can absolutely change. This is the church of change. What does that mean? It's like, it means being like Christ. When no one is looking, I'm like Christ. I'm like Christ. I'm like, I'm like Christ. Well, why are you like, why are you like? Because I'm impressed with him. See, the problem is you're not impressed. You got to get impressed with Christ. I'm impressed with him. Man, I'm impressed with him. Well, how are you impressed? Because I have some unique information. He's not like Muhammad. He's not like Buddha. He's not Confucius. He's not like Buddha. He's not, he, he's not like any of the prophets. He's not like the angels. He's not like any of the priests. He, is, he stands alone. And so that's the first objective is getting really impressed with who he is and what he has done or is it that you're so comfortable you don't want no more you're fine I know Jesus he died on the cross for my sins coming back I know I know all that I was in third grade I learned that <laughs> do you really know it yeah I know it I know the man I know him are you really hungry for him does your heart panic after him? Has a heart panic after Waterbrook? Do you want him to be on the inside and not just the outside? Or are you really thirsty for him? I tell you what, if you really thirst for him, he break all kind of habits. You get really hungry for God. Ooh. The Bible says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When you really get hungry for God, something starts happening. Well, how, how I get hungry? You start reading your word. You start forgiving people who've hurt you. Let it go. That's, that's let it go. But he hurt me. Let it go because of the cross. Read your word. Start praying. Start fasting. Start celebrating him in a quiet place. Stand up, everybody. Comfortable or conformable? What are you? You know, we got seven more days for this consecration. Just a consecration. Well, no, no. It, well, yeah, maybe it is and maybe it's not. Depends on how you want to treat it. Seven, seven more days. Next Sunday, we'll have communion here. It'll be communion Sunday. We're going to culminate our consecration with a Sunday morning communion. This year is going to be a, a breakthrough year. Some of you, I want you, I want you to go to Walmart and get you some thank you cards. Get you a pack of thank you cards and get ready. Because he's going to bless you. Get, you. get your thank you cards. Get your stamps. And get ready for the blessing. I've already done that before. I had to go back and give me some more cards. And some stamps. By faith, go to Walgreens. Get your thank you cards and your stamps. Because he's going to bless you. Why? Because you have made yourself conformable. Actually, there's a blessing in being conformable to his death. I'm going to bless you because you're shaping up. And see, whoever God to bless somebody, you ain't living right. You ain't right. But I can pour out my blessings on you like crazy when you conform like me.